Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll look at the difference between shifting the production possibilities curve and pivoting the curve. With that said, let's get into it. So when you're moving the PPC, there's two different things you could do. You could move the X and Y intercept together or shift the PPC left or right. And you can also pivot, which is when you move the X intercept and the Y intercept at different amounts. Let's start by looking at shifting the PPC first. To begin, we need to remember that on both axes are two different goods. So on the Y axis, I'll call it good Y. And on the X axis, I'll call it good X. The first movement we're going to look at is a shift to the left of the PPC. You'll notice that both the X and Y intercepts have moved by the exact same amount. Now this can be caused by either a decrease in the factors of production available to be used in the production of both goods, so good Y and good X, or an increase in the cost of the factors of production available to be used in the production of both goods. And you might be wondering why I'm emphasizing it needs to be for both goods simultaneously, and that's because if it wasn't, it would be a pivot. But we'll talk about that later on in the video. A shift to the left means that I can now produce less of good Y and less of good X. Alternatively, I could also have the opposite, which is a shift to the right. This could be caused by an increase in the factors of production available to be used in producing both goods, or a decrease in the cost of the factors of production available to be used in producing both goods. So it's essentially the opposite. And you'll notice that we've now moved our curve to the right, and I can produce more of good X and more of good Y. And so every point on the new PPC is further to the right or farther from the origin from my original curve. But shifting the PPC is the easy part. Now, at the end of this video, we're going to look at four different examples, and I'm going to ask what you think will happen to the PPC in each scenario. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you stay till the end, take a look at that, um, maybe test your own knowledge, and I'll give an explanation as to why each shift or pivot happens, because those are the types of questions that you'll see on a quiz or a unit one test. And obviously you'll also be expected to know this by the time you're ready to write your final exam. So now let's turn our attention to pivoting the PPC. Once again, we need to make sure we have a fully labeled graph, so I will label good Y on the Y axis and good X on the X axis. These could be any goods. Normally, they'll be given to you in the problem that you're looking at. So here's the first pivot that we're going to look at. And you'll notice that the X intercept has moved to the right or gotten larger, but the Y intercept has not moved at all. And so we would call this an increase in only good X, which means I can now produce more of good X, but the same amount of good Y. And there's two possible reasons this would happen. One, there's an increase in the factors of production available to be used in producing only good X, or you guessed it, there's a decrease in the cost of the factors of production available to be used, once again, only producing good X. Let's take a look at another example. We could also have something that looks like this. Here we have an increase in the y-intercept, but no change in the x-intercept. This is almost the opposite of what happened before. I can now produce more of good y, but the same amount of good X. So we would say this is an increase in only good Y. This would be caused by an increase in the factors of production available to be used in producing good Y, or a decrease in the cost of the factors of production available to being used in good Y. Once again, if you're not really sure what these explanations mean, don't worry, we're going to go over four examples at the end of the video. Now let's take a look at another possible scenario. We could also have a pivot that looks something like this. Now you'll notice that good X has moved towards the origin and good Y has not. And this would mean that the total amount that I can produce of good X has decreased and there's been no change in good Y. So I would call this a decrease in only good X. Now this could happen due to a decrease in the factors of production available to be used in producing good X or an increase in the cost of the factors of production available to be used in the production of good X. Once again, this does not impact good Y whatsoever. And finally, let's look at one more example. You'll probably know what it's going to look like. Good Y is going to move more towards the origin. And so you'll notice the Y intercept goes down, but the X intercept does not move. We would call this a decrease in only good Y. This would happen because of a decrease in the factors of production available to be used in the production of good Y, or an increase in the cost of the factors of production available to be used in the production of good Y only. Now you might be wondering to yourself, is it possible for something to happen to both intercepts at the same time? Maybe they both move in a different direction. And the answer is yes. Take a look at this PPC movement. 
Here we have a decrease in the y-intercept and an increase in the x-intercept. So we would know that some shock occurred that decreases the total amount of good y we can produce, but increases the total amount of good x we can produce. Now I'll leave to your imagination what a possible PPC shock could be that would cause this, but in the meantime, we're gonna hop into some examples looking at both shifts and pivots of the PPC. So let's start off with a general PPC curve. Once again, I have good Y on the Y axis, good X on the X axis. And example one is going to be an influx in immigration. Now notice that I do not specify if good Y or good X is impacted abnormally compared to the other. So I would assume that this impacts both of them equally. An influx in immigration means that there's going to be more factor of production available for both goods. Well, what is the factor of production? It's labor. Since there's more labor available to be implemented in the production of both goods Y and X, we're going to see a shift to the right of the PPC. This is because it's not specified whether good Y or good X is impacted separately. So we will assume that the influx in immigration will see a distribution of labor going into the production of both goods. Let's take a look at our second example. Example number two. Here, there is an increase in the price of an intermediate good used in the production of only good Y. So the keywords here of good Y only mean that only the Y intercept is going to change. So now we're looking at a pivot. The X intercept is not going to change at all. So is the Y intercept going to increase or decrease? Is it going to go towards the origin or is it going to go higher towards the arrow at the top? Well, there's an increase in the price of an intermediate good. This means that the cost of producing good Y has increased, which means if the cost of production has risen, I will decrease the amount of good Y that I can make. Once again, good X is not impacted by this whatsoever. And that's because the question specifies that's the case. Let's take a look at our next example. Example number three, technological innovation causes a decrease in production costs of good X only. So here we know that only good X or the X intercept is going to be impacted and the Y intercept is not going to be impacted at all. Now, technological innovation causing a decrease in the production cost means that I will be able to produce more of good X. And if I can produce more of good X, then I'm going to see a movement to the right of the intercept and it's going to look something like this. Notice good Y has not been impacted and that's because the question told me that the shock only benefited the production of good X. Now it's time to look at our final example, example number four. A natural disaster destroys land and capital being used in the production of both goods. However, good Y is impacted more heavily than good X. So now we're being told that both good X and good Y are impacted, which means both intercepts are going to change. A natural disaster destroying land and capital means I will be able to produce less of both goods because now the cost of production has increased or less factors of production are available. The key here is knowing the magnitude of the movement. While we don't know the exact movement, we are told that good Y is impacted more heavily than good X, which means when we move this curve, the impact of good Y right here, the distance between the original curve and the new curve should be greater than the impact of good X. So you notice that both the production of good Y and the production of good X have decreased, but good Y has decreased more. How do we know? Because the question told us that. And so there we have it. That's covering four examples, looking at shifting and pivoting the PPC. We hope you found the video helpful. And if you did, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel. And of course, let us know in the comment section, what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next.